Hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, I'm gonna try to make this short <laughs> video. I'm gonna try to make this video short. Um, I don't know how that's gonna work out. Um, just turn this, uh, this backlighting off of my computer into my glasses. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to just sit here and sort of free talk, I guess you can say, um, about notary stuff. As y'all know, I'm a notary. And I've been doing it for about two and a half years. And <clears throat> I've learned a lot during that time um, of what it should and shouldn't do, all of that kind of stuff. And I tell you, um, just putting that on mute. Sorry about that, y'all. Not going off of any script. I'm just talking off the top of my head, really, from my heart. Um, the subject I really want to talk about is running your notary business and I'm trying to understand some things with the business um, I know people have different personalities different ways of looking at things and recently I've been hearing people talk about doing last-minute notary orders and I guess for some last minute is considered an hour before you know, you get it an hour before the appointment. So it's, <clears throat> they call you at five o'clock and want you to be there at six. Um, and that is very last minute. Um, for some people, it's three hours. Sometimes it's two. Um, for some people, it could be, you know, same day. Um, you know, they call you at 10 o'clock and say, hey, at four o'clock, we need this signing done. Can you support it? And what I'm learning is that there are people who they have this method, this way of doing the documents and apparently it takes them some time. And personally, I'm having a hard time understanding how much time do, do we need or do you always need to look through the documents before you're closing? Because I do know some people say you should always look through the documents before you close you know before you go to a closing you should always see what's in there and do it once over but looking at the fact that we're trying to run that we're running a business not even trying that we're doing this as a business many of us you know full-time i'm still part-time i'm working toward full-time um i'm trying to bounce trying to understand how does a person expect to make money doing this if they always need a two or three day lead time with doing these orders now granted if you're brand new i get it if you don't have any training anybody to call on anybody to tap you know touch bases with to help you out i get it but after maybe 20 30 maybe even 100 closings and I believe in each area, there's only so many companies that you're working with. So there's only so many companies that I'm working with in my area uh, that, that that is doing business here because not all the signing companies do business in Virginia. Not all the signing companies that do business in Virginia are doing it in the Hampton Roads area. So I have, to me, a small segment or a small sample size of businesses that I'm working with, and their documents are pretty much the same. So after a while, I'm thinking, okay, well, how much time do I need to review all more settlements, documents that they send to me, or documents that come from Villa Title, or documents that come from um, Signature Closers, or The Closers LLC, or Sunshine, or Coast to Coast, because they all have their own particular way that they do their documents, and I see that, so... I get a document from Villa Title, I pretty much know the format and flow of it. Um, Carrington Mortgage, you know, um, something that's coming from um, home, Loan Depot, you know, um, if it's a VA, FHA, like like um, one of the companies, um, Simple Signings. Anything that I get from them, I know it's going to be two, almost 200 pages, if not 200 pages, and I know that they're going to have in their documents um certain pages in there more than just one time they'll you know um they'll have the 
addendum to the loan application in there twice sometimes. Um, they'll have other documents in there twice. You know, there are certain companies that have the affiliated business arrangement agreement in there twice. So you know they're going to have these things in there twice, sometimes three times. So if we're trying to make money and you know the mortgage industry is last minute just naturally, you know, that's just their way of doing things very last minute. If you bought a home, you know that at the last minute they finally told you, oh yeah, you need to bring $2,000 to closing and it has to be a cashier's check. And by the way, they're letting you know 10 minutes after the bank done closed. So we know that this last minute thing with the mortgage industry already exists because if you purchased a home, you've probably dealt with that. So now as a signing agent, you're also dealing with it. And for me as a business owner, and this isn't my first business, this is my third business. And I run another business of IT consulting where I do website development. So with that, along with this, I had a photography business and I also helped my wife with her business as a uh, cosm with her cosmetology school. And with all three or four businesses, I have yet to see a time where me as a business owner or my wife as a business owner has not had to been ready for a last minute opportunity. And last minute is subjective. So doing the photography business, there were times where I would get a call on a Wednesday for a, sun, for a Saturday wedding because I did wedding photography. So on Wednesday, I have a wedding assignment. All of a sudden that popped up in three days. So that's Wednesday, then Thursday, Friday, then Saturday at 10 a.m. We're off and running. And I was able to take those orders. Why? Because I always made sure I had plenty of film. I always made sure I had all my camera equipment together. I had everything ready to go. Similar to like being in the military, you know, or, or, or a prepper, um, doomsday prepper, you have your go bag. So I always had a go bag. I always was ready to take on an assignment. If I was not already booked, I was able to hop on that. With my IT consulting business, I've learned you got to be ready to take on last minute assignments. Even with that last minute calls to come and meet to discuss possibly doing a, an assignment for somebody related to IT. Sometimes they just want to have a quick meeting and it's five o'clock and asking you to meet in 20 minutes. So you have all that kind of stuff. And with the notary, I'm learning the same thing that you got to be ready. You know, even today, today is Sunday, um, whatever the day, the 25th, um, it's what, nine, uh, almost nine o'clock at night and yeah, 939 at night. And at the date of this recording, I just went and purchased some more paper when I went to the, um, to the Walmart, bought another case of paper, bought five more rings of, um, legal in the case in that case of paper was the letter and then i bought five rings of legal that was 66 bucks and then before i go to bed tonight i'm going to be ordering some more ink for my toners for my um, toner ink toner for my own um, printers and just the other day yesterday the 24th i received another printer so i have three printers two that i'm using um one that has re that's always ready to go into the car, and then the one that I normally use for the, here at the house, and then I have a backup. Now, you, as many of you know, the, the DWT of the 6200 Brother printer, you can't find those anywhere, but they had the actual DW version of it without the extra tray on sale for 219 Yeah, I bought it a couple years ago for 159 but I said, you know what, 219 instead of the two normal 250, I'm going to go on and buy it. So that way I can have a backup printer because I sold my backup printer with the extra tray to another notary who was getting started because they couldn't find the um, printer anywhere. So since I had 
the you know the dual tray printer i sold it to them along with the warranty that came with it and they're good to go what i'm learning in that and what i'm trying to encourage everybody to do is get to a point of being prepared for that last minute notary assignment now if you're the type of person that don't want to ever do anything last minute, whatever last minute is for you, I get it. But at the same time, if you're looking to make some solid money, knowing that this industry in and of itself is last minute, that means you as a person, you as a business owner have to get ready for last minute. When you look at from a business standpoint, not about how you personally want to do things, but from a business standpoint, the top businesses in this industry operate on last minute stuff. That's what makes Amazon so awesome and their business model because they can actually get stuff to you next day. At one point in time, prior to the COVID, they was even doing same day. Right now, they're not doing same day. They pretty much haven't done it this year. Um, unless it's groceries, but there was times where I was able to order stuff and get it the same day. So we live in a society that is quick, 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 quick. And with the notary business, you have to get yourself in a position that you can handle those last minute calls. You have to be in a position to where if somebody asks you, hey, and especially if you've been doing good and they have a relationship with you and they like you and you act accurate and you don't mess up stuff and you deliver, you know, you ship the stuff out on time. It is not unfathomable, fathomable, unrealistic. And, he, and I would even say unorthodox for a title company to say, you know what? We know Jan. We know Karen. We know Earl. We know Steve. Can get this job done so we're going to give them a call forget trying to send it out i'm going to give them a call hey are you available to do one at six o'clock tonight i know it's last minute we'll even pay you an extra fifty dollars but can you do this for us and you need to be in a position to do that you should always be expecting to get that phone call to say hey boom because that might be the interview that might be your trial run to see if they want to throw more business your way or bring you on permanently or use you more regularly. Case in point, I had a meeting uh, assignment and next thing I know, I'm sitting in front of a former local TV personality. Didn't realize I, when I saw her, I was like, hey, I recognize her. I asked her and she said, yeah, I'm so-and-so. I was like, Cool. Come to find out she's running a business dealing with real estate. They was buying a property out of state. She had never done a mobile notary um, assignment or purchase for an out of state property. And I went in there and I was ready to rock and roll. A couple of things that I had ready to go. I had my business card because that's what she asked. I hear a lot of notaries don't have business cards. And I explained to her, I said, I'm always ready to go. I, I'm gonna have mobile printer set up. I can go to Franklin, I can go to Eastern Shore, I can go to Suffolk, I can go to Richmond, I can go anywhere you want. All I need you to do is just let me know when you want me to go. And she was like, wow, okay, great. So now she knows that she has somebody that she can rely on to get the job done for her. Did a great job with her and her husband. And that means she knows that I can do a great job for her clients. It is very important as a business owner, okay? Think of this, if you're doing this as a business, it is very important as a business owner to get yourself into a position to where you can handle the stuff that other people can't. I learned something years ago from this one preacher and he said, people only pay you for the problems you solve not for the ones you create. So if somebody asks you and you know you're available to do it, but you just don't because you feel you didn't have enough 
lead time, the, the lead time that you wanted, and they ask you, I need this done. Can you get it done? The appointment's in an hour. Can you get there at six? Knowing you can now, you can. There's nothing that can stop you. And they already got the documents uploaded, and all you got to do is print. And let's just say it's not even a full package. It's a buyer's package, a seller's package, and it has 75 pages. And you're like, no, I can't do that. That's just that's not enough lead time for me. Well, you're creating a problem for them because now they got to go find somebody else. And the only time they feel that they can call you is if they give you five hours lead time. When they're in a crunch, they're not going to call you because you're creating a problem for them of not being available. And you'll get paid nicely if you show them that you are available and solve to solve their problem. We have to, and I know I sound like I'm repeating myself, but I, I'm trying to, and I hope I'm not offending anybody, and I'm not trying to put anybody down with this, and I know people probably may want to go in on me or, or tell me whatever, but when I look at the, the, the landscape of being a business owner, I've yet to find a time where a business is not encouraged to be ready to go at a moment's notice. To always be ready. That's what it's about. Those are the ones who make it because that's how you separate yourself from everybody. Every, All of us can do a great job if we have five hour lead time to get prepared to do a, a signing. You tell me at noon that I have to be have to have an assignment done at twelve, and you give me the paperwork four hours ahead of time. Yes, I can get that done and, and do it properly and pristine. But the question is, can you do good under pressure? That's where it's at. And if you can show them that you can do good under pressure with little lead time, without even seeing the documents. And what's cool is with us as notaries, we always have the ability to call somebody to get guidance. So it's not like we're really out there by ourselves dangling. So if you come across something you're not familiar with, you have somebody you can call. If you have a membership with the National Notary Association, hundred and some bucks for two years, that's what I did, you can call them. <laughs> so... And then if you're part of other notary groups, you have your, you know, your members there you can call. So it's not like you're out here on your own by yourself. You can Google information, all of that. There's ways of finding out answers to a problem that you're coming across. So I'm, I'm just like, as a business owner, not as a notary, as a business owner, I want my business to be in a position to respond to a request for my services <clears throat> at a moment's notice. If I am not in that position, how do I get into that position? Now, I do understand that many notaries and probably y'all are saying right now, well, I get nervous and I start getting panic attacks and I start getting, you know, sweats and, 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 and I'm just, you know, my confidence isn't there. Then we need to find a way to get the, your confidence up. How do I get my confidence up? First of all, just believe in yourself. If there's training, if you're with a company, um, and, there's, and there's many different companies out here who have various levels of membership, if you're with them and you're going through all this training and you're sitting in on, on, on web calls and you're looking at YouTube videos, at some point in time, your confidence level should be higher than what it was 16 videos ago. If your confidence level is at the same point or lower than what it was when you first looked at video 16 hours ago, then that's a problem. And we have to find a way to resolve that so that you can have the confidence to take on those last minute orders. We all deal with it. My, the very first signing that I had, now I had some leeway with it. I was called at 7.30 at night on a Wednesday 
and was told to go to an appointment on a Thursday. So I had 24 hours, and it was at 7.30 the next, so I had 24 hours. But when I got in there, I was still very nervous. My hands were shaking as I was writing my name. I was spelling my middle name wrong. I got through it. And once I got through it, I was like, okay, I can do this. And then the next one came, and then the next one, and then the next one. But at the same time, I believe sometimes people, if you're refusing to do orders because they're not at a particular dollar amount, which means if you only want to do $100 or 125 150 and you're walking away and you're avoiding the $75, the $85, then you're not getting that experience. So when you finally do get a $100 one or there's a $200 one, you're nervous because you know you really don't have the experience to to hop in there because you haven't done this. You you haven't been doing it enough. And now they want to pay you two hundred dollars to do this signing and it's in forty five minutes or two hours or whatever. You're nervous because yeah, I want the money, but I I'm not confident because I really haven't done that many. And you take those orders that are $75, $60, if you're able to do them, and especially if they're close, you know, and knock it out and gain some experience. And to me, it helps because recently, I had an order, I had a couple, of, I've had an order two times to do two closings at one time. And I've been told that some notaries refuse to do those type. They don't, they only want to do one, a, one closing at a time so i don't if you're trying to grow your business i don't understand why would you not be willing to do two especially if they're willing to pay you and the two that i got that that i did i mean they only paid me 150 for two which means only 75 dollars a piece but doing two closings at one time doing the two closings when i did them again the second time i did them for the same person that person directly requested me so the first time I did, I had never done it before. And I can't remember if it was a last minute deal or not, but I had never done one before like that. I did it. I had to figure a way to get, you know, to coordinate it. I got it all done. And then six months later, she called me and said, hey, can you do this um, for me again? And I was like, sure. And the next thing I know, she made the title company call me and say, I want him, Griff, to do this. I want Stephen Griffin to do this for me. And they was like, no, no. And she said, well, then I'm not doing a signing. And they were like, okay. And they called me and I did the two closings for her. Then I had an order to do three closings at one time. Got all three, which were probably about 100, over, over 150 pages each. Got all three done in an hour and a half. Okay, cool. Then next thing I know, a few weeks later, I get a I'll answer order that was in Snap Docs, the same way the three one was. I answered the order, and then they called me and said, "Hey, this order is really for three orders, not just one. Can you do that? Are you willing to do that?" I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Why you ask?" She said, "Cause some notaries don't like doing multiple closings at one time." I said, "I have no problem with that." Then I get a call from another company. And they said, we got a closing, but this time it's five properties at one time. Do you mind doing that? Not a problem at all. So I did five properties at one time. It took three hours. So I got all five properties done in three hours. This is how you get, and, and I had some leadway on that one too, um, maybe a day or two, I can't remember exactly, but it wasn't like, you know, a week or anything, it was like, it was like maybe two days, you know, two days I had, and I was like, okay, you know, it might have been the next day, it might have been like on a Thursday, because I know it was done on a Friday, so I probably got the order on a Thursday and had to do it that Friday, and then by taking that order, you know, they did all the printing for me. They printed me the double, the two copies. They were like, can you print the copy? I'm like, 
they said, you don't mind us printing? I said, sure. However you want to work it. So they, I didn't have to print anything. So I did five closings. Didn't have to print anything. Didn't have to scan back anything. It made $625. $125 a pop. I, I don't understand how a notary could not want to take advantage of that. And I'm hearing that some notaries are unwilling to do so for whatever reason. And personally, I think it's confidence. Can I really handle it? You know, sitting there, that's a lot to do. But this is why we got to get in our mind. We, It's like anything, playing a sport or whatever, you sort of visualize yourself hitting that last shot. That's what Kobe, LeBron, Michael, Kareem, Magic, Bird, all of them do. You know, being the, the Tom Brady's and all of them, you know, they and, and um, the Roger Starbacks and the, the Barry Sanders, they visualize themselves juking people and all of that. The, the Deion Sanders visualize themselves intercepting the ball. Visualize yourself doing two signings at one time, three signings five signings at one time visualize yourself how would i handle it how would i go about doing it what's the best way to do it and you can and you'll be and when it happens you just go with it and there's enough training out here on how to just handle one signing that all you got to do is replicate that just five times at, at one setting you know i mean I don't, I, I, I don't understand it. And at the same time, please don't think that I'm bad-mouthing or bashing somebody. What I'm saying is, from a business standpoint, and again, I'm talking business, irregardless of what the business is, if you are in it to make money and you have a service or a product that you're providing you have to be looking at how do I make sure that I can meet the demand? A quick story. When I was real heavy into website development, I don't I have my business. I don't do it as much as I used to. I do it every now and then. If somebody needs something, I take care of them. But I don't really advertise doing it. Um, because so many people are like I can do it myself, you know, I just go to GoDaddy, da 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 da. I don't need a web, so they do it, and I end up doing more fixing of websites that people have broke. Well, several years ago, I was working with a guy who made some awesome cookies, and he kept asking me to make a website, so I built him a website, and he wanted to have an online shopping cart, and I like, okay, no problem, and I said, what's your logistics? And he's like, what do you mean? I said, what are the logistics of your webs of your business to where you can get orders filled? And he's like, I just bake the cookies and drop them and deliver them. I said, no. I said, can you do five dozen cookies and get them shipped out by tomorrow? Well, no, 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 that's too much. I can't do that because I'm only working on one oven. I said, then you need to inform people on your website that you cannot do but this amount of orders. And he was like, no, I don't want to limit anybody. So you want to leave it open that people can order whatever they want. Yeah. I said, by doing that, you're telling people, order whatever you want, and I can get it to you in X amount of time. I said, and if somebody orders five dozen macaroons, five dozen white chocolate macadamia, five dozen chocolate chips with sprinkles, five dozen chocolate chips without sprinkles, five dozen sandy pecans or whatever. I said, and you can do all of that on top of your other orders and get everything shipped out with no problem. You're like, no, 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 I can't. I said, so how can you say, give me all of your orders, but yet you know you can't fulfill them and you're not putting yourself in a position to fulfill them. You're not even trying to. I said, what happens if the your normal shipping UPS goes down or you can't get to UPS. Can you use DHL or FedEx or the post office? 
do you have relationships with them? He was like, no, I don't. Needless to say, the business didn't last because he just really couldn't handle, he couldn't even handle the local orders that people was giving him coming to his, you know, him locally. And I'm like, how are you going to handle stuff coming from across the country? There's just no way that you want to be able to do that. So I said, you need to find a way to do this. And he just refused to. And therefore, the business actually just, it just went away. I'm saying all of this to say simply, as a notary, what you have to do is simply get yourself in a position to be able to meet the demand. That's all you have to do. And there are ways that you can go about doing it. There are people who can help you. Um, I shared with you some things that I've done, which is always have the supplies that you need, ink for your toner, ink pens, all of that kind of stuff. You got the, um, you know, like if you're using the G2, I mean, you know, you just, if this gets low, you just refill it. You just buy buy these here and just refill them instead of spending money on a whole nother pen set you know just like i have um like one of my pens here you know as you see this is getting low so guess what i'm gonna be doing tonight i'm gonna be ordering some more i meant to i meant to order some sooner and i forgot but i do have other backup pens that in case you know that okay if i really need to use some blue pens i have some but because blue pens, I wind up using more. So that's what I'm doing. And if you're like, why is that broke? I use this pen. This is my writing pen because sometimes I don't like this here on my fingers when I'm grabbing a pen, trying to twist it. I don't like it. It just irritates me. So this is the pen that I use and everything. That's why the ink also low because I use this pen the most for me. But I'm going to order some more refills. There's nothing wrong with that. You have, I have some. I'm about to order some more. Have the stuff that you need. Know what your work schedule, your daily schedule is, your weekly schedule. So when orders come in, you can be able to say, yes, I'm going to do it. Know what your your spouse's order, you know, schedule is going to be. So that you can be able to say, yay or nay, that you can take an order. Know what your kid's schedule is going to be. Make sure people who need to get picked up is getting picked up and this, that, and that and dropped off. All of that so you can say. Okay, I can do it. And I understand that's another reason why sometimes people can't do stuff last minute. But if your reason for not doing it last minute, to me, is just solely because you want to spend an hour and a half, two hours glancing over the documents. And I, I mean, to me, I don't read all of that information on the document from the standpoint of the um, loan application. I've heard notaries, they read the loan application. They read all the people's details. They read the the terms and conditions and this and I'm looking to see okay how their name is on there because some companies will start off with their name Earl J. Jones and then all of a sudden it'll go to Earl Jeffrey Jones so you need to make note okay they just switch from a middle initial to his full middle name I need to say that or it'd be Earl Earl Jeffrey Jones, and then it goes to just Earl Jones. Then you have the, you know, formerly known as, and all of that kind of stuff. So I get it. Yeah, review the documents for that. However, if you're being attentive and astute, you should be able to pick up on that when you're going through the documents. So this shouldn't be a thing of, oh, I missed it. You should always check to see if there's a an initial block down on the note on the deed and then on the um the assumption riders and stuff and the one to four riders those are things that you know you need to look so and then on the loan application you need to look down at the bottom to see if there's a spot to initial because sometimes there are some of the companies put initial blocks on the um the credit um the credit bureau thing you know the, the credit report so it's certain things that you make mental note of. Okay, let me check. So you look down in the corner. Oh, okay, initial block. So if I see it on the note, more than likely it's going to be on the deed. I know most definitely if it's on the deed, then it's going to be on the 
assumption, you know, the, the BA assumption thing. And then a lot of times on that, um, that condominium rider and all of that. So it'll be on those. So it might be a rush job, but if you know what to look for, if you just, when you get there, take your time. And don't try to get it done in an hour when you get there. Go ahead on it. If it's going to take you an hour and a half, I'd rather you take the last minute order and take an hour and a half doing it than to not take the, uh, the um, last minute job and miss out on some money. That's the that's my thought process in all of this. So I know there's been over a half hour looking at the thing on talking, and I hope I've share something that's useful to you but again i'm not saying that you need to change your whole modus operandi i'm just saying you need to really think hard and fast about from a business standpoint how do you want your business to be if you want your business to be i only do closings that are the next day or two days out. It's nothing wrong with that. Just know that you're going to be limited on the amount of money you make unless you're getting closings at $300 a pop. You making $300 for each closing? Yeah, okay, cool. So the average closing sometimes is $100. You doing one for 300? Okay. I'm I'm down with that. But you know, if you're like, I want my business to be, you know, more responsive, then work toward doing that. Work toward getting your business to be more responsive. Um, may have to get a second cell phone. I'm recording on one. I have another cell phone um, that I put certain apps on that I can check, you know, for, for notary assignments and stuff. So that way, if I'm on the phone or using this phone for GPS, you know, mapping and all of that or, or, or checking something on snap docs and then something comes in on solidify or something comes in on signature closers. I can, I, I use this here for that. You know, sometimes I'll have my snap docs account up on this one. And then when an order comes in on this phone that I'm recording on, I can check my calendar on my snap, my snap docs calendar over here or my signing order. And then it's like, okay, yep, I'm available. So I do that. And that way I'm more responsive to when an order comes in. And then that way, when they ask me, I can tell them. And then as y'all know, I have my little paper calendar that I keep with me. Um, it's in my bag right now, but I have my paper calendar where I have a little synopsis of everything that I'm doing um, that I get booked for. So, and actually, I'm actually booked already for three assignments in November. And I was booked for them last week. So there are times where you get an order that's way out you know, down the road. But what I'm seeing is more often than not, you have, you know, three days or less, you know, um, sometimes the same day. And that's just the way it rolls. And I was never told that I wasn't supposed to do last minute signings. I was told that I just need to do signings. I didn't know anything about last minute signings until I started hearing people recently talk about, do you do last minute signings? So the concept was foreign to me. And I know I've only been in this business for two and a half years. I'm not a pro or old pro or anything from that standpoint. I have about 700 under my belt. But what I do know from a business standpoint, as a business owner, it is my responsibility to get my business at a point to where I can be responsive to my customer. And my customer is the title, the escrow, the signing companies, the loan officers, the lawyer, the law firms. Those are my customers. And if they call me and ask me, are you available to do this? I need to be able to tell them either yes or no. And if I'm saying no, then it's really the only time I'm saying no is because I'm already booked. But if I'm not already booked and I don't have anything going on in my life that I need 
to attend to during that time? The answer is yes. And my wife and kids know. And we make a necessary and the necessary accommodations for each other. We adjust things around. And I get it done. That's what I do. And it has been proven very lucrative. I'm averaging maybe 4K a month doing this. Um, I hit 5K one time. Um, I could have hit 5K last month, but we had to go out of town for a funeral. And then I could have hit 5K this month, but I had to go out of town to take care of some stuff with my dad. So, and even with that, I'm just, I'm just under... $500 away from 4k so I still made my money and that 625 helped me get there and then another dual signing that I did helped me get there so you know five of those seven of those closings I did were between two appointments a five closing one and a two closing one you can't beat that which came out to a total of $825 between two appointments. You can't beat that. I mean, well, you probably could if you're getting $300 a pop, you know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is that's what it's about. So get yourself in a position to be more responsive to your people, your clients, those title, escrow, signing companies, all of them. The money will come. And you'll build your confidence and you'll be able to handle this, okay? So if there's anything that I can do, feel free to ask. Um, if you have any comments um, to, the, to the positive or negative or you like or dislike, you know, hit the thumbs up, thumbs down. Feel free to share all of that. But what I would appreciate you do that if you have any concerns about anything that I've said, you need clarification about something that I said, ask me. Don't just assume and then go running off and, ah, you know, talking bad about me. Um, just talk to me. Just ask me. I'll be more than happy. I mean, I'm putting this out here for a reason because I'm trying to generate some, some, some dialogue about this because I'm trying to get an understanding because I help notaries also. I got seven notaries that I'm helping and... I'm sort of hearing the same thing from a few of them about not doing last minute or they don't like the last minute. And I'm like, okay, if you're doing this full time and trying to make money, trying to make your mortgage payment, your rent payment, your car payment or whatever, you need money. So I'm like, how much time do you need to do this? <laughs> you know, um, that's what I'm trying to figure out. And I'm doing this, working a full time job, running a, another business, helping my wife with hers. And I still take on last minute signing. But I understand everybody's personality is different. And if that's your personality not to, I support that. But just make sure you're doing it for the right reason when you say no. And don't let it be based in fear. And I'll be willing to help you out to get rid of that fear. Um, to help you find a way to get that confidence built up. But let it be because you already booked. You got other things planned. Not because... You feel you're going to be, you know, a piece of rice paper, which is very fragile, some tissue paper, and just break up, fall apart because you only got an hour to get to assignment. And that's why you don't want to do it. I don't want to do it because I don't, I don't have enough time. Don't be afraid. You can do this. And many others have done it. And I believe in you, and I know you can too. All right. Thanks for your time. Sorry, it's almost 45 minutes. Um, but I just wanted to share that with y'all. And like I said, comment, like, share. Just let me know. This is not a monetized thing. I'm just doing this because, you know, I do care. I care about y'all. And I understand, you know, how important this is for many of you to be successful at this. And I want y'all to be successful. Okay? So, Hit me up with your comments. Feel free to contact me directly through whatever means that YouTube provides. and Or hit me up at info at griffinnotary.com. Info at griffinnotary.com. I'll respond to you on text. You know, 
your thing to your um, emails and and get back with y'all all right so thanks again for your time y'all be easy out there and go make that money peace